Hey everybody, welcome back to a brand new slice of gaming. I am the only Pi 3 and 4. Before I introduce this game, I got an introduction to voice. It's time, my cunning Koopas, to use my time machine and steal the most valuable artifacts the history has to offer. Mario, my collection is almost complete. And there's not a thing that you can do to stop me. Whoa! <laughs> Bowser's museum is inside his castle. I have to get in there and return all the stolen artifacts before history is changed forever. At last, Bowser's castle. I'll show that no good reptile that he can't mess with history as long as I'm around to set things right with horrible, horrible drawings. The greatest collection of all time is nearly complete, and it's all mine. And no one can stop me now. Not even Mario. Looks like Bowser has let himself go a little bit in that picture there. And now presenting... Mario's Time Machine for the Super Nintendo. And this game is brought to you by GameAnyone.com. So this has been released for the PC, for the Super Nintendo, and for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1993. In this game, Mario has to travel back in time to restore some artifacts that were stolen from our lovely protagonist of the game, Bowser. As you might have guessed from the introduction there, he's in possession of a time machine. Why he would randomly go around and steal artifacts and why not use it for something a little bit more useful? Like going back in time and, you know, finishing Mario off once and for all might be a good idea. Or kidnapping Peach and, you know, having her in his castle. And he wouldn't even have to worry about kidnapping. But no, this this is his plan. He wants to go around stealing all the artifacts that, that he can for whatever reason. This game has been rated the fourth worst Mario game on Screw Attack. I don't know, this is one of the first educational or uh, sorry edutainment games that nintendo has brought out including mario's missing which was i thought was an awesome game personally growing up i used to play it and this one all the time so let's start our adventure here let's get going mario's off on his new journey all right so as you can see so far we've got this is just the first floor we're just getting started into this game so we've got five different artifacts on this particular floor we need to return to, to the owners. And of course there's our hero Mario in the castle. You can see statues of the Koopa kids in the background. And the basic controls of this game, you can move, I can run around, I can jump around. But we've got ourselves some new equipment in this game. Take a look. It's our lovely time machine. Um, Bowser, next time? When you think that Mario's gonna come and stop you, maybe, just maybe, you wanna lock your main sort of plot thing away. Just, just saying, you know. Well, we're not gonna travel back in time yet. Oh no, I've got stuff to explain. I can jump around, and also there's some different endings to this game, I suppose. If you pick the item that's on the far left-hand side first, and then go to the right, you'll get the correct ending, I guess, to the game. But... Honestly, I don't know. I'm gonna do the right thing though. I'm gonna do the proper ending. But we're gonna start off with the apple. So to take the item, you press the X button. So now we have to return to the owner. But before we go back in time, your score is at the top there. So you would say score times whatever. You'll get a higher score if you answer little questions first. And we've got our questions and our little history lesson right here. That's right. Who's ready to learn some history? Raise your hand. Okay, everybody, everybody needs to put their hand down, calm down, calm down. I know you're excited for History Lessons brought to you by Mario and Nintendo, but you have to calm pants down. Alright, I'm going to read this story here, and we're going to answer these questions. So, Cambridge, 1687. Born on... And we got ourselves a list of answers here. So, for example, the first one for this one is Christmas Day, 19... Or I keep saying 19... 1642, Isaac Newton went on to become one of the world's greatest scientists. Hmm, Apple, Isaac Newton, that kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? 
Newton was uninterested in school, much like many regardless little reckless teenagers, until he attended Blank University. Hmm. Could that place have anything to do with it? Cambridge. But his studies were there under uh, yeah, were there But his studies there were interrupted by London's Great Black Plague of sixteen sixty five. In two short years back to at his family's farm in Wolfsorp, Newton invented calculus. <sighs> hey Mario, here's an idea for you. One year back there, can you make sure Newton doesn't invent calculus so Math 30 Pier could be a little bit easier for me? Thanks, but by the way, while, while you're there, you know, it's, it's not very important, but... Anyways, he made one of the major discoveries in optics and formulated his famous theory of blank after observing a folly apple. Well, I think we know what theory that would be. I wish there was an easier way you can kind of go through this. Gravitation. Patch 2! Newton's three laws of motion. Go, 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 go. There it is. Revolutionized both physics and astronomy. He also discovered the blank of white light. The spectrum. That's right, we're learning while we're playing this, everybody. We're learning. Of course, when I was back, back in the day, when I was doing this stuff, I was like, Pfft. expect me to know all this? Yeah, no. Um, for you to know the answers for this thing, people will actually tell you the answers, but you earn more points if you do it beforehand. And of course, I've memorized the answers. Of white light and invented the first reflecting telescope. Although London's Royal Academy of Science made him a full-fledged member at the young age of... 30? Newton actually waited many years before publishing his first discoveries in two landmark books, The Blank and Optics. The Principia. The Principia. Where is it? There it is. Awesome, and when you hear that pipe noise, you know you've got everything right. In the 20th century, Einstein's theory had prevailed in atomic sizes and extreme speeds, but Newtonian, Newtonian physics are still used to safely navigate rockets to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Awesome stuff. That's right, we learned a little bit more today. We learned, we grew a little, now we're big and strong inside. Let's get out of here. So, what's next? We answered the question. We got the item. Now we've got to return it. It's time. Mario, you're a little bit ahead of the turn time now. So we have to use our best of the best invention we've ever received in a Mario game. And travel back in time. Alright, so we gotta go AD, so that's right. Navigating this is stupid as hell, I have to say. So, Cambridge, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we have to change this to an 8. And then this to... whoops to a six. Sweet. And this to a seven. Of course, um, Mario's doing a very historic moment here and he's traveling back in time. So, um, how do we travel back in time? I'm sure everyone's wondering that right now. How does, uh, one travel back in time? You're wondering, well, you go surfing for mushrooms. You have to collect 10 of these in order to go to the next area. You only have a certain amount of time to do so. We can hold the uh, X button to speed up here. Um, items kind of disappear and there's also little spikies in case you haven't noticed. And then when you're done collecting mushrooms, you have to find one of those portals and go in them and you can go back in time. See, the stupid thing about this is this actually did this in the real game itself too. The uh, items kind of just randomly disappeared and I don't know why. And those things we don't want to run into. You can't jump to avoid them or anything. You just kind of hope for the best when you run into them. We don't get any bonus points, I'm afraid. Alright. Mushroom. Where's another one? There it is. Yeah, it actually like flickered in this stuff like that in the original game too, which sucked. And when you do run into those spikies, you um, lose one of the mushrooms too. 
so that kind of sucks. You can't really tell sometimes what they are until you get close enough to them, or sometimes they'll do that, and then be a dick and then hide that mushroom on you. Okay, now we gotta find one more. There it is. There, now we gotta find one of these. And off we go. Um, or not. Alright, I will try traveling back in time again when I come back, so I will catch you guys later. See ya!